Our guest today is Michael Cunningham. We are meeting during Conrad Festival, and this is Writers in Motion project. Hello, <laughs> hello, hello again. Uh, I've got a little, but very little story for you for the, from the beginning. Um, some time ago, I was in a, abroad in an American uh, library, and I was mm -hmm. looking for some new books, new titles. New, uh, and I found your book, uh, The uh, Snow Queen. Yes. And immediately I felt that it's uh, some kind of you know, queer junkie book. That was my first impression, <laughs> uh, judging by the title. Mm -hmm. And uh, before reading this book, I uh, was looking for some opinions, reviews, just to sure. feel, the <laughs> feel the general vibe. And all the people were uh, saying that the title is about fairy tale. And I felt like an old hippie. <laughs> who sees uh, <laughs> queer drugs and rebels everywhere. Well, of course, it, was, it, is, it is a queer junkie book, as it turns out. Yeah, and what do you think about this, uh, this ambiguity in the uh, well, title? it was intentional. Uh -huh. um, it is, of course, the Snow Queen is, of course, the title of a Hans Christian Andersen story. Mm -hmm, okay. And as you noticed, mm -hmm. you know, snow is a term for Cocaine mm -hmm. and heroin queen is a slightly insulting term mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. a gay man, and I, I kind of wanted I wanted it to work both ways. Mm -hmm. um, my editor and I had a fight about it because mm -hmm. he said you can't use the title of a fairy tale mm -hmm. if you're not really writing about the fairy tale, and I just finally said, you know, that's the title of the book. Mm -hmm. It's been the title of the book since I started writing the book, mm -hmm. and if anybody returns the book and complains that this is not the Hans Christian Andersen story, I will refund that person's money. <laughs> but coming back to fairy tales, because it's one of the yeah. interesting uh, frame of, of the book, did you enjoy them when you were a kid? Oh, I loved them. I uh -huh. loved them. My mother used to read them to me when I was a kid, and mm -hmm. I just, I, again, 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 wait mm -hmm. one more time. Mm -hmm. I was like a junkie. <laughs> My first drug mm -hmm. was fairy mm -hmm. tales. Did you memorize them? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I could recite any number of them. I won't. <laughs> ah, I'm curious, but <laughs> let's, uh, let's keep it. But when you uh, sometimes when people read books uh, which they they read when they were kids, uh, kids, uh, teenagers, young adults, and they read them again, uh, being adult, they yeah. feel embarrassed about their right. feelings. Right, right, right. They feel shame and uh, yeah. this kind of feelings. Do you share this kind of emotion? Certainly not about the fairy tales. Mm -hmm. Other books, mm -hmm. yes, but no. I mean, I think these fairy t the fairy tales that we all grew up with mm -hmm. um, have been around for centuries, mm -hmm. and for good reason. There, mm -hmm. there, there are myths. There are way of telling each other the story of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We really should mm -hmm. reread every book about every ten years because. It, you're not the same person. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. book is the same, but you are a different person. The Anna Karenina I read when I was 20 is not the Anna Karenina I'm reading now. Mm -hmm. It's better or? It's better, mm -hmm. yeah, because mm -hmm. I'm slightly less stupid. <laughs> because sometimes you have these books which you loved when you were young, and now you feel like the stupid person who enjoyed crap. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, apologize to myself mm -hmm. for having been young and <laughs> easily taken in. That's okay, you're uh -huh. young. You get, you get to love a sentimental, badly written book, <laughs> and then you hope to grow out of it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But no, I don't, I, don't, I don't slap myself around for that. <laughs> That's um, good, I think. But uh, coming to deep emotions, uh, are you still in love in Provincetown? Am I in love with Provincetown? Um, yes, mm -hmm. but in the way of a long marriage. Uh -huh. what does I'm it in mean? love with Provincetown, I'm irritated by Provincetown, <laughs> mm -hmm. sometimes I want to kill Provincetown, <laughs> and sometimes I, sometimes I can't believe my luck in mm -hmm. this beautiful, amazing place. Mm -hmm. Can you say, say something more about this place? Because I don't know if everybody in Poland knows anything about Provincetown. It's not very popular don't. like yeah, New York. Yeah, New yeah. York um, it's a small town in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. um, north of New York. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on the very tip of um, a piece of land, so there, there, there's water all around. It's very mm -hmm. long, a long, thin strip of land. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the few places in America that actually prefers eccentricity mm -hmm. to normalcy. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Most Americans mm -hmm. are very fond of normalcy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And in Provincetown, um, you know, the, the, the people, there's, there, are five, there are sort of five mayors who run the town. And one mm -hmm. of them is a drag queen, mm -hmm. and one of them is a nudist, mm -hmm. though he does wear clothes for the meetings. <laughs> um, so conservative. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you know the director, John Waters. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's there in the, summer in the summers, mm -hmm. and he is by no means mm -hmm. the most outlandish character there. Mm -hmm. And it's set against this impossible beauty, this bay with tides coming mm -hmm. in and out and crazy stars at night and there's constellations are shining down mm -hmm. on drag queens and nudists mm -hmm. and I love that. Mm -hmm. I do. I do. <laughs> I'm, now I'm jealous, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, come sometime. <laughs> I will, but you said also that it distracts you from writing. Uh, that it blocks you from writing, being in Provincetown, in your book, Land's End. Oh, yeah, you know, I, um, I think I do remember that one. Um, <laughs> in the fall, especially, it's so beautiful, this burning blue sky and this mm -hmm. deep, almost blue-black ocean that it can be hard to do anything but just look at it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a relief mm -hmm. when November comes in. It's just gray, and you can just look back at your typewriter mm -hmm. or your computer. Mm -hmm. Or not. Or not. Mm -hmm. or Do you enjoy not. the periods that you don't write? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when I was younger, I was one of those irritating 20-somethings mm -hmm. with like always writing things on a cocktail napkin. <laughs> and I was, can I use that? You know, that and, um, <laughs> And then I, you know, I realized I should stop that. Mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't be looking at the world through the lens of what is or is not useful to me as a writer. When I'm writing, I'm writing. Mm -hmm. When I'm done writing, I'm just there. Mm -hmm. I pay attention, but I'm not thinking, is this material? It must be a relief. It's, it's a relief, and it's just a better way of living. You uh -huh. know, if, if, you're, if you're, there's something I, I, I realized kind of, a little creepy about thinking of the world as material for a book. The mm -hmm. world is much, much bigger mm -hmm. than a book. Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy other uh, occupations, jobs, or uh, activities in your life uh, comparing to books? You know, mm -hmm. I, 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 well, I, I do what everybody does. I go to movies and mm -hmm. meet friends for dinner. Um, it's fun, funny. Um, I've learned silversmithing. Mm -hmm. I make, I make, I work with silver. Because mm -hmm. um, when the books started to be more serious and there's you know, contracts and advances and reviews and all mm -hmm. this stuff, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Some grateful way. for <laughs> it. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to m make something that wasn't so such a big deal. Mm -hmm. And um, I can cast boxes and vases and mm -hmm. make jewelry and mm -hmm. um, I do that. Mm -hmm. Most days when I'm done writing, I just make, I start, well, I make something. Oh my God, it's yeah. amazing. I didn't, I haven't heard about, about it's this. Metal, working with mm -hmm. metal is fantastic. I heard about, you know, this soft, uh, soft materials to shape, but not, not uh, silver and not uh, metals. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, you work, mm -hmm. you work with wax uh -huh. and then you cast it. That's great. Fantastic. Fantastic. I it. it's um. just, uh, I'm dreaming now, so <laughs> <laughs> come back to, to, to books. That, that's what we, what we do. We, we could talk about silver, but yeah. After. After. Yeah, after, we, yeah, after we talk about silver. After. Um, sometimes I'm wondering, because every, uh, every single book of you that I saw has an, some kind of notice on, uh, on its cover that it's a book um, by the author of The Hours. Yep. Do you consider yourself mainly as an author of The Hours? No. I don't. I don't. The, mm -hmm. the Hours was one of the book. One of, it's one of my books. Mm -hmm. um, this happens sometimes. It mm -hmm. happens often mm -hmm. to a writer that one of your books gets sort of pulled out and mm -hmm. that's the book that everyone wants to talk about. That's the book that everyone reads. And there are times, of course, when I feel like, oh, I don't want to talk about The Hours anymore. Mm -hmm. But then I give myself a proper slap in the face <laughs> mm -hmm. and remind myself mm -hmm. how fortunate I am that anybody still wants to talk about any book of mine at all. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. shut the hell up <laughs> and talk about the hours. Yeah? Yeah, I do. 
but you have to force yourself to to be the author of uh, of an hours, yes. I well, you know, it's it's. But it's because not, it it's was not I don't, a long I don't, time ago. It was a in long fact. time <laughs> ago. There's been one, two, three. There's there's been like four books mm -hmm. since then. Yeah. Um, but you know, to whatever extent I am the guy who wrote the hours mm -hmm. is a public thing. I don't sit in my studio and think of myself as the guy who wrote the hours. <laughs> I, I think of guy. myself <laughs> as the guy who's mm -hmm. writing this next book. Uh huh. Because I felt that uh, when I was reading some kinds of uh, interviews and articles about you, when you got this award of lifetime achievement in literature, yeah. uh, it felt like an award for an old man. Mm -hmm. Didn't you feel that way? Well, I certainly felt like, okay, you win the Pulitzer Prize. Mm -hmm. Is it all downhill from here? Mm -hmm. um, it's not, mm -hmm. as it turns out. Mm -hmm. You keep working. Mm -hmm. I want to keep work. I expect to be writing for the rest of my life, or at least till I lose my mind. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, when it first happened, I thought, ooh, ooh. <laughs> really? really? Well, just yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There was a sense of, of, you know, is this it? Is this the end? Um, mm -hmm. And then I got over it. Mm -hmm. Overthinking about yourself in yeah, this category. Just, yeah, yes. just move on, move mm -hmm. on, and and you know, again, just shut up and be grateful, <laughs> because uh -huh. because so many good books don't get the attention they deserve. Mm -hmm. um, and you just and it feel it felt insulting mm -hmm. to other writers to be complaining about mm -hmm. my good fortune. Mm -hmm. But do you think this? Uh, being lucky as an author is connected with you being an American author. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, American writers get more attention mm -hmm. than writers from some other countries. Um, <laughs> it's luck. I, I, I hope I don't sound falsely modest, but so much of it is luck. Mm -hmm. You have to write a good book, you do. And mm -hmm. if you didn't think it was good, you wouldn't try to Even if you're an American author. <laughs> Even if you're an American author, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but, you know, you win a prize because it was the right jury. Mm -hmm. You sell a lot of copies because somehow you tapped into the zeitgeist in ways you couldn't have expected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the hours. Did I, did I think a little a book about Virginia Woolf and, mm -hmm. and, and the depressed housewife was going mm -hmm. to be a huge hit. Mm -hmm. I did not. <laughs> of course not. Uh -huh. that was you, a huge were, you were not betting at, uh, at no, 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 no. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I, didn't I, I actually remember saying to my editor, "I promise the next book will be a big, sprawling bestseller." But here's this little. <laughs> <laughs> so the last question, uh, because I, I I can see that it's it's our time. Mm. Uh, did you ever feel shame for being a writer? Yes. Yes. Yes, it's a, it's a good question. It's something I teach, mm -hmm. um, it's literature and writing, and I talk to my students about shame mm -hmm. and writing, which is not something people talk about mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy to be asked this question because, especially when you're new at it, uh, certainly when I was younger, and, and most of my certainly my gifted students feel. It's presumptuous to say you're a writer. You're not mm -hmm. a writer. You're just a hack. You're just an idiot. Mm -hmm. And you can't. And for years, I couldn't even say tell people that I was a writer. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, enough time passes, and you begin to realize, well, this is what a writer looks like. This is what mm -hmm. a writer is. I'm part mm -hmm. of that category. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to overcome some fairly serious shame mm -hmm. early on. Mm -hmm. um, now I just feel ashamed because I want the books to be better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because one of the troubles about being a writer is you always had a better book in mind. Mm -hmm. You know, floating in the cartoon balloon over your head mm -hmm. is a bigger, funnier, darker, mm -hmm. more remarkable book than what mm -hmm. gets done on paper. Even if what 
bite is pretty good. You know, mm -hmm, you have to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. believe in yourself to some degree, but but you also have to survive mm -hmm. the sense that what you've written is a sort of rough translation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of what you were thinking of. It's one of the reasons I love working with translators, mm -hmm. is I feel like, well... That you're losing something in It was a translation to begin with. Mm -hmm. The original is a translation. So somebody who translates it into a language other than Eng English is just taking it another step down the line. Uh -huh. It's always been a translation. There's always been something more, more remarkable that you can't quite pull down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you keep trying. You keep hoping. Mm -hmm. Next book. Not ashamed. Mm -hmm. Not ashamed enough to stop. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Pleasure. You.